welcome to another episode of MRCOG videos from ACE Courses. In this video, we are going to be discussing about perioperative management of HIV patients. I happen to be in the lovely city of Konkan in Thailand for a meeting and I thought I would shoot one or two videos for you while I'm here. So the purpose here is to reduce the operative surgical risks to the patient and also minimize the risk of infective risk to the healthcare provider. HIV patients tolerate operations well, particularly when they have good CD4 count, say more than 200 per microliter. When they have low viral loads, say when they have less than 10,000 copies per mil, and when they have no comorbidities. However, Potential risks are there for HIV-infected patients, and these include cytopenias, of course that means thrombocytopenia, anemia, and leukopenia, which can predispose a patient to infections. There can also be drug-induced hepatotoxicity and nephrotoxicity for you to bear in mind. There can be adrenal insufficiency and there can be metabolic disorders such as insulin resistance. The risk of transmission of HIV to a healthcare provider from needle stick injury is about 3%. The risk is particularly high if the patient has got high viral load, if a hollow needle is involved in the injury, if there is deeper tissue injury, and if the injury occurs during phlebotomy. How should we preoperatively assess a patient with HIV? We should elicit the duration of disease, the most recent CD4 count and viral load, any history of opportunistic infections and medical comorbidities. We should also obtain history of any antiretroviral regimen and any infection prophylaxis. We should perform a clinical examination to assess for oropharyngeal thrush, lymphadenopathy, and any signs of infection, particularly chest infection. We should then arrange a CD4 count, viral load, and blood count if these have not been performed in the preceding six months or so. In terms of preoperative management, if a patient has got high viral load, it would be worthwhile considering delaying the operation to administer antiretroviral medication to bring down the viral count. We should consider commencing prophylactic antibiotic treatment based on disease status and past history of opportunistic infections. We should optimize any comorbid medical conditions and we should improve nutrition in malnourished patients. Let's now look at how we can minimize the risk for the healthcare provider during the operation. The first step is to use two pairs of gloves and to change gloves regularly for long procedures. We should use blunt tipped needles and stapling devices. It's important to wear face and eye protection to prevent mucocutaneous transmission. It is important to use instruments for attraction rather than hand or fingers and use instruments to handle sharps. And it is very important to use instruments to remove the scalpels. I hope you found this video about the perioperative management of a patient with HIV infection useful for your exam and of course for your clinical practice. Until we meet again on another video for your MRCOG exam, goodbye from Konkan in Thailand.